A number of Pennsylvania Republicans are doubling down on their support for former President Trump, even though he lost the state and several court challenges there. President Biden won the state by more than 80,000 votes. But as Politico reports, the battleground remains a, quote, bastion of Trump loyalists. A majority of Pennsylvania Republicans in Congress and the state's legislature backed the Trump campaign's efforts to overturn the state's electoral college votes for President Biden. Some potential candidates in the upcoming gubernatorial and Senate races are already emphasizing their connection to the former president. Holly Otterbein has been covering Pennsylvania's Republican Party for Politico, where she's a national political reporter, and she joins us now. Holly, welcome. You know, this is so fascinating because a lot of folks have been wondering what will the Trump effect be once he's out of office, and it would seem Pennsylvania is, is a great place to look. So tell us what's behind this push by Pennsylvania Republicans to demonstrate unwavering loyalty to the former president, and why are more moderate Republicans struggling to get traction? in the state. Yeah, Pennsylvania used to be a state that kind of reliably produced these moderate Republicans like Tom Ridge and Arlen Specter, and that has just completely changed um, in recent years. Now the party has shifted to the right more um, and really has stuck very closely to Trump, which, as you said, is particularly notable since he just lost Pennsylvania. Um, it seems like Republicans here have decided that the solution to their problems is just more Trump. And so as we head into the 2022 midterms, you're already seeing candidates that are likely to be running in, in the Senate race and the gubernatorial race here, just trying to prove their loyalty to Trump as much as possible. So Democratic Governor Tom Wolf's term ends in January of 2023. Republican Senator Pat Toomey announced his retirement after his current term. So, Holly, what can you tell us about some of the more vocal pro-Trump candidates eyeing those seats? Yeah, we have here in Pennsylvania, it's going to be an absolutely fascinating um, year in 2022 because we have open seats for both governor and Senate, as you mentioned, um, because of uh, Wolf and Toomey. And so to just take one example, um, State Senator Doug Mastriano uh, has really tried to put himself out there as the face of the MAGA movement in Pennsylvania. One thing he did was he personally went to the Capitol on the day of the insurrection. Now, he says that he left as he saw the unrest start to begin. Um, but he made a big show of going. He even advertised a bus there. Um, to take tr to take protesters there. So that's just you know one example of uh, the kind of candidates um, that we're seeing, you know, try to tie themselves as closely as possible to Trump. He also played a big role in the effort to try to overturn the election results. He was a, a he was a very high profile player in hearings that were held by Republicans in Harrisburg um, on you know what they called. Um, election issues and irregularities. Um, so, you know, he is clearly trying to go down that MAGA lane, um, and he's a likely gubernatorial candidate. Let me ask you about another lawmaker. So until recently, Congressman Scott Perry was relatively unknown outside of Pennsylvania, and he's now facing calls from some Democrats to resign for attempting to help former President Trump overturn the 2020 election results. Holly, what was his role? So Scott Perry, you know, as you mentioned, very few people knew him outside of Pennsylvania until just this past weekend when news broke that he had introduced Trump to a Justice Department lawyer who was trying to oust the acting attorney general. And the reason that he wanted to do that was to overturn the election results in Georgia. Um, that is a very unusual step for him to take. And then on top of that, um, he reportedly talked with uh, the Justice Department lawyer and Trump about the idea of sending um, by the Justice Department a letter to Georgia state legislators claiming that a voter fraud investigation could change the election results in Georgia. Um, he confirmed in a statement to reporters that he did introduce the two politicians, or I'm sorry, the two men, um, and, he, and he confirmed that they did talk about the election. He didn't confirm much else. Um, but, you know, that shows, again, just how closely 
um, Republicans in Pennsylvania are tying themselves to Trump. He actually just faced a competitive election there um, by a Democrat called Eugene De Pasquale. He was the former auditor general here in Pennsylvania. Um, it, it's not a, you know, it was a competitive race. He faced a competitive race in 2018 as well. Clearly, he won both of them. Um, but, you know, this isn't a R plus 20 district. Um, but we're still seeing Republicans just tie themselves very closely to Trump despite his loss. You know, Holly, I'm wondering about other factors. How have population trends in Pennsylvania factored in to what you call the Trumpification of the state's Republican Party? Yeah, so, um, you know, one person that I talked to, a GOP consultant, I thought made a really good point, which is that central Pennsylvania has grown enormously um, in the last few years. And that also happens to be the place where folks like Doug Mastriano, the state senator who I mentioned who went to the Capitol on the day of the riot, and Scott Perry um, are from. And this is an area, actually, that I'm from um, originally, and it's an area that's very deeply oh. conservative and that tends to um, produce a lot of these candidates. And so that population growth has led to an increase in power for them. Um, at the same time, the Philadelphia suburbs used to be a place where a lot of these moderate Republicans came from. Now, the suburbs and Phil around Philadelphia, just like around the country, have really shifted to the left in the last 10 or so years. And so they are producing less of those moderate Republicans. And so that's, I think, part of the reason that we're seeing a shift. Interesting. I did not know you were from central Pennsylvania. Um, let me ask you about this push, though, by some more centrist Republicans to try to make a comeback in 2022, because this is interesting. This also would seem to be part of the quote unquote Trump effect uh, after he's left office. But what can you tell us about those efforts? Yeah, um, we've heard a number of different potential candidates are thinking about running in the Senate and governor's race. Uh, Ryan Costello is one of them. He was a Chester County lawmaker um, who was a moderate. Um, he, you know, he, he left office um, before facing a challenge from Chrissy Houlihan after uh, the district maps were redrawn in 2018 after the state Supreme Court ruled them unconstitutional. But he's just a much more down the middle kind of Republican. He's thinking about running for Senate. Um, Al Schmidt is a city commissioner in Philadelphia who uh, kind of got in Trump's crosshairs because he defended the election in the city as uh, fair. And he has left mm -hmm. the door open to higher office. In addition to that, a group of never Trumpers um, at the national level called the Republican Accountability Project, they've pledged to spend $50 million across the country, um, both supporting Republicans who voted for impeachment of Trump and then also trying to oust Trump loyalists. And Scott Perry is pretty high up on their list because of this recent news. And so I think you are going to see you know, just as we're seeing a kind of um, war happen nationally between the two wings of the party, when you look at kind of what's happening to people like Liz Cheney um, versus other hardliners in her caucus, we're going to see it at the Pennsylvania state level as well. Absolutely. As we said off the top, really an interesting case study there in your home state of Pennsylvania. Holly Ottervine, Holly, great to have you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me.